What would have happened? I really didn't have an idea of how this would all play out. I had hoped that I would have an influence on theology of the church, but I didn't realize that I'd have such a tremendous influence and impact on other areas of life, many areas of life, including science and technology. There was a question asked earlier about what is the Reformation, so I thought it'd be worthwhile to start off this presentation by telling you just a little bit about myself. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. Myself, that's a reflexive pronoun that means me. <laughs> Some people laughed. I need to do that again? <laughs> myself, that's a reflexive pronoun that means me. <laughs> okay, sorry. <clears throat> you, I invented technology. You don't believe me? Listen to what I wrote nearly 500 years ago. The cell phone is God's last and greatest gift. It is his way of leading us to understand the world, which is to say matters connected to the true faith, in its entirety and communicated in every language. It is without doubt the world's last eternal flame. Now, I, I really didn't say that. But in the bondage of the will, I wrote this. People are prisoners of their phones. <laughs> That's why they're called cell phones. <laughs> oh. Now, okay, maybe I didn't invent technology, but I use technology often. In one of the table talks, there's recorded this uh, text message between myself and Philip Melanchthon. Philip texted me one cold winter day and said, the windows are frozen. So I replied, try pouring hot water on them. Uh, several minutes later, Philip texted back, the computer is totally trashed now. <laughs> uh, okay, I should have stopped before I got it. In spite of these made-up stories, the ideas rediscovered in the Reformation had a profound influence on the development of both science and technology. There was an explosion of technological artistry in the wake of the Reformation. The Reformation liberated creative minds to rediscover the joy of creation. That spark resulted in scientific discovery, and technological innovation. That's my thesis. Now, some disagree. This first book by Andrew Dixon White. Andrew Dixon White was co-founder and the first president of Cornell University. And his major treatise in multiple volumes, A History of the Warfare of Science with Technology. You can find many similar discussions. I, I got to stop looking at all these things. I was looking at some just before I came here, so I better not read all these to you. Uh, but just one other one, American Atheist G. Richard Bozart. Christianity has fought, still fights, and will continue to fight science to the desperate end. But just as false as my Luther quotes were up front, so too these statements are most certainly false. The biblical ideas that Luther rediscovered not only liberated theology, but also human creativity, leading to advances in science and technology. Those ideas were the fertile soil for the development of science and technology. Here's Dr. Don Cole. The influence of Christianity in providing an appropriate intellectual ethos for a rational understanding of the universe is at least one reason for the development of modern science in Europe 500 years ago. For Luther, the idea of creation was paramount. This is what Luther said. We are at the dawn of a new era for we are beginning to recover the knowledge of the external world, the natural creation, that was lost through the fall of Adam. 
we now observe creatures properly, but by the grace of God, we already recognize in the most delicate flower the wonders of divine goodness and omnipotence. In other words, in the Reformation, we are able to investigate God's word directly without the influence of other authorities making pronouncements. We're able to investigate God's world properly with direction from the Creator Himself. In other words, the Reformation created a climate, an ethos of openness and acceptance of new ideas, which generally encouraged scientific and technological development. How so? Yeah. Good question. How could that be? I thought the Reformation was just something dealing with technology, rediscovering God's word, I think technology, rediscovering God's word in theology. What does this really have to do with science and technology? When Luther declared scripture alone, Luther was focusing on a vital idea. And that is freedom, the freedom of a Christian. Freedom from false authorities, people, or ideas who would set themselves up as equal to Scripture. Freedom also from guilt over sin. I, what do I have to do? How can I work my own salvation? But also freedom to do things, freedom to learn, freedom to investigate, freedom to understand, Freedom to know a world given back to us by God, as Luther indicated. A Christian is a perfectly free Lord of all, subject to none. A Christian is a perfectly dutiful servant of all, subject to all. Dr. Benny reminded of that famous Luther quote this morning. Paradox? Here's Luther again. One thing and only one thing is necessary for Christian life, righteousness, and freedom. That one thing is the most holy word of God, the gospel of Christ. So, how did Lutherans of the Reformation era, how did they impact science and technology? Yeah, I know, somebody told me the other day, gosh, your lab coat is all dirty. That's sort of what happens when you do science. You know, really things happen, like acid all over the side of it. Uh, that does happen. How did Lutherans respond to this Reformation idea and help propel science and technology as we understand it today? Let's investigate several Lutherans of this period. In the 100 years from 1517 to the earliest part of the 17th century, and see how science and technology thrived in this ethos of the Reformation. Here's the scientific backstory. The people we're going to discuss were, in one way or the other, involved in these two ideas. On the one side, you have the geocentric model or theory of the universe. The geocentric idea is the Earth is the stationary center and things revolve around it. On the other side, you have the heliocentric theory, which says that the sun is at the center of the physical universe and the other things revolve around it. Now, likely you've heard that the church opposed this idea. The church argued vigorously against the heliocentric model. The church tried to suppress this science. The church was anti-science. Actually, the Reformation church aided science and technology. Let's see how that happened. This is Nicholas Copernicus. You've heard that Copernicus created the heliocentric model. I'm happy to give him credit for that. The idea had been floating around. Copernicus was a careful and diligent scientist and also a committed Christian, although at the time, of course, 
part of the Roman church. Yet, in spite of what Copernicus did, there's a strong Lutheran connection. Lutherans freed this idea so the world could actually hear it and evaluate it. Let's begin. This is Georg, Georg Redicus. Redicus was professor of mathematics at the University of Wittenberg. He was a, therefore a colleague of both Luther and Melanchthon. He was at ground zero of the Reformation. In 1539, Redic Redicus got a sabbatical. Not sure how he did that. He got a two-year sabbatical. Not sure how he did that either. But what he did on this sabbatical was something radical. He had read the initial treatise of Copernicus, and he went to visit Copernicus. He stayed with Copernicus for two years, learning everything he could about it, and actually ultimately aiding Copernicus in working out his model. Redicus, the Lutheran, Copernicus, the Catholic, became close friends. They both admired each other's commitment to scientific integrity and the pursuit of truth. What Redicus did, more than anybody else, was to convince Copernicus, you must publish your major treatise, this idea of the heliocentric model. For a number of reasons, Copernicus did not want to publish. The standard thing that you'll read is, he feared the church. Don't think that was the major reason. But Redicus worked long and hard to convince Copernicus, you must free this idea. You must publish this idea so other people can look at it and investigate it.